My wife is a veterinarian at an animal shelter, and I have now repaired two of these microchip scanners that stopped working, and it turned out they had the same issue, so I figured I would make a video about it. So this is a tool that if the animal has a microchip under its skin, you use this to scan it, and then that gives you a unique ID number so you can look up the owner's contact information to contact them if the animal came in as a stray. And both times this happened, the device stopped working, my wife brought it home, and I noticed that there was a rattling noise, so I figured something was loose inside, and it turns out that there is a critical part that is just held down by hot glue. So over years of use and picking these things up and putting them down, that part can eventually just get knocked loose and it will stop, stop working. So in this video, I'm going to show you how to take this thing apart, fix the part that came loose, and then put it back together. So to take it apart, flip it over, and I guess this might vary depending on the brand. This one is pretty worn out on the label here, but this is an Allflex, and I don't remember what the last one I did was, but the process was very similar. You are probably going to need a Phillips head screwdriver, and there will be some screws on the back you can take off to separate the two halves of the case. There might be an extra screw for the battery compartment, but you don't need to worry about that one. So I'm going to maybe speed up or cut through the video here as I take these three screws out instead of making you watch me do all three of them. Okay, once you've got those screws off, you can pop off the two halves of the case. <coughs> Excuse me. Make sure you set your screws somewhere where you're not going to lose them. And we now have the top half and then the bottom half, which has the actual circuit board in it. Be careful if you flip this top half over because the two buttons on the front will just fall out. So you're going to have to get those back in later. I've also had this little plastic cover for the screen fall out and then have to pop that back in. So you can set all of that aside for now though. What we are interested in is this bottom half where if we look under the circuit board here, you will see an electromagnet. So there's a metal bar in here with a copper wire wrapped around it, but it is not really screwed into place or held down by brackets or anything. It is just held down by a blob of hot glue at each end that attaches it to the case. And again, over time with putting this thing down, picking it up, moving it around, Eventually that glue comes loose, that magnet will just kind of still be attached to the wires, but wobble around in the middle of the case and the scanning won't work properly. So I have already repaired this one, but I'm going to complete the disassembly to show you how to access it because you can't necessarily really get to it easily under the circuit board here. So you're going to look at the top of the circuit board and there will probably be, in this case, two more screws, one there and one there that I'm going to remove to take the circuit board off and give me full access down into the bottom of the case to <coughs> excuse me, fix that electromagnet. So two screws there, I'm going to loosen them. They're just going into the plastic of the case, so sometimes they can sort of start to strip the threads. Okay, be careful pulling this off because it is connected by some very thin wires to these coils here, so you want to keep this connected and just bend it off gently. You don't want to yank it or you might break those wires. And again, now you have access to the bottom of the case where there's two things. There's the big coil here, and then there's the tighter coil with the metal core. In my experience, the big one is not the one that comes loose. It's this one because, again, if I try to get this a little closer, I have slathered a lot more glue on here than was there initially. Initially, there was just kind of a little dab on each end and that's what was coming loose and this thing was kind of just dangling around down here in the case so that was the rattling noise you would hear when you picked it up and that's why it wasn't working so I just popped that back into place applied a more liberal amount of glue but being sure not to cover up the screw, hole, screw holes accidentally because you're going to need those later when you put it back together then once that glue has dried again making sure I did not use too much because you want to make sure Everything goes back together nicely. If you use too much, or you might have trouble getting the screws back in. I can put the circuit, actually before I put the circuit board back on, I just remembered another failure point I had with the last one. It was also not charging properly, and that came from fatigue on the charging port here. So that is this little jack that is, looks like in this case, just surface mount soldered on to the PCB here, not through hole. So mechanically, again, over years of plugging in and removing the charging point, this actually 
came loose, so the charger was fine and the rest of the board was fine, but the contacts between the charger and the board were no good, so it wasn't actually receiving power and charging. So for the last one I did, I also had to redo the connections and re-solder this jack on there, and then that fixed that. So I guess if it's not, the rattling noise is one thing. If it is not charging, that is another thing to look at, the fatigue on this port. And then again, maybe getting it in there and adding some hot glue or something to reinforce that a little bit so it doesn't just break again eventually. Now to put everything back together, first you're going to screw the circuit board back on. Again, you want to be careful to make sure that the charging and USB ports line up with the holes in the case and you don't accidentally kind of miss with these screws because again, they can sort of start to strip the plastic after you have assembled and disassembled this thing a couple times. You see how right there the ports aren't actually aligned. So, and maybe I'll fast forward this part of the video, it might take some fidgeting with the screws to get this pushed into the right place and actually get the screws tightened and into the proper holes where they're supposed to be in the plastic. Don't tighten everything down, put the top case back on and then look and realize that you don't actually have the ports aligned because then you're gonna have to take it apart and do it again. There we go. So you can, might have heard that snapped into place much better. And now the ports are aligned. And then here is the final tricky step to putting this back together. Again, remember earlier in the video, if you flip this upside down, the buttons fall out. So to put it back together, you actually need to put this side face down, put the buttons in, and then gently lower this half on from the top, which is a little annoying because now the battery wants to fall. Put the back half of the case on, and you'll have to be careful with the battery positioning or else it might not close all the way. And then I am going, oh, it's getting mad at me because I'm hitting the buttons on the front. So this can be a little fidgety with getting everything aligned again. You wanna make sure that one of the buttons didn't kind of miss and is coming all the way out to the front. Once you get that lined up, you are then going to put on the three final screws that you took off at the beginning, and then you should be good to go. So there we go. If you have any experience with these things, repairing them or other common issues and how to fix them, please go ahead and leave a comment on this video. Thank you.